Last class we talked about um, adding and subtracting fractions. Now, the one rule we need to remember about adding and subtracting fractions is that we have to have what we call a common denominator. Okay, so that means the number on the bottom of the fraction, that's our denominator, has to be the same for us to add the numerators. So if I had 5, 6 plus 1 sixth, I'm adding 6 so that that denominator remains the same, and then I would just add the numerators 5 plus 1, so I get 6 over 6 which we can simplify because 6 divided by 6 is 1 because all the parts of the whole are accounted for when we have 6 sixths. Now, rules for multiplication are different. We don't need a common denominator. When we multiply, we just multiply straight across. So if I had 2 thirds times 4 fifths, I would multiply my numerators 2 times 4, which gives me 8. And then I would multiply 3 times 5, which gives me 15. So with multiplication, there is no need to ensure that we have the same denominator. We can just multiply regardless of what our denominators are. Now, along with multiplication, um, we also talked about um, equivalent fractions. Now, equivalent fractions are just a um, they are just a equivalent means uh, equal. So equivalent fractions is just an easier way to say equal. Okay, and for those of you who were in class, we've seen this picture before. It's known as these are called fraction tiles, and you'll notice that some of the lines match up, okay? And the lines indicate length, okay? So our first one here, you notice how this is one half right here. This first box right here is one half. And this line lines up with that. So we can see that this is one fourth. This is my second fourth. We can see that two fourths is the same length as one half. So those what we, those is what we would call those fractions are equivalent. One half is equal to two fourths. They are the same. You'll also notice. There are several others that have the same length as one half. Actually, all of these do. Okay, so notice how the fifth doesn't line up with the one half, but three sixths equals one half, four eighths. 5 tenths, and then of course 6 twelfths. They all equal 1 half visually by length. But we can also, if we look at the numbers themselves, you can see that each denominator is a multiple of 2 or 
can also look at it as being divisible by 2. So if I um, pull up a new page tiles, okay, you'll notice that besides the um, besides one half, there were some others that had the same length. Let's, uh, for example, let's take uh, let's take uh, one third. You notice if I draw this line straight down, it also intersects with two six. So one third is equal to two sixths. Um, we also have one fourth here. If I draw a line straight down, that's equal to two eighths. Or if we look at two fifths. That is the same as four tenths. So again, this would help. This helps in um, reducing fractions to its simplest form. So let's take um, let's take the four the four tenths. If I start with two fourths. We know that's equal to one half. Besides using the fraction tiles, I can also confirm that mathematically because if I divide both numerator and denominator by two, two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. So that's how we know it's equal to one half. Um, one of the other uh, four eighths was also equal to one half. And that is because if I divide both numerator and denominator by four, four, to four, four divided by four is one, eight divided by four is two. Now I'm sure some of you thought, well, oh, wait a minute, they're divisible by two as well, and that is correct, they are. But if I divide both, if I reduce, this is what we call reducing fractions. Okay, reducing is putting them in the simplest form, or dividing the numbers that they have in common until you can't divide anymore. Um, two, four divided by two is two and eight divided by two is four. Now you'll notice that is the fraction we had up here. So that's still not in simplest terms. We would have to divide by two again to get one half. Now whether you divided by two twice or you just divided by four once, we still get the same answer. So it doesn't matter either way. Um, so when it comes to putting fractions in their simplest form or reducing them, we can do it mathematically like this, finding, so what we do is we find a number that both the numerator, which is the top number, and the denominator, which is the bottom number, can divide by evenly. Okay, so let's go back to our fraction. If we look at that mathematically, 4 tenths, okay, well, uh, we found that 4 tenths was the same as 2 fifths. And that is because I can divide both 
numerator and denominator by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now there is on occasion you may come across a number that isn't on your fraction tiles chart. So that's where we would have to use this rule for reducing fractions, which is find a number that both the numerator and the denominator can divide evenly. So let's try one. Let's try um, 18 24ths. Now that's a little bigger, clearly not on our fraction tiles. And of course, if you can't think of a number, you can always start with two, because they're both even. So let's, uh, let's start with two. So uh, by dividing both top and bottom by two, I'm reducing the fraction to nine twelfths. Well, that's still not in its simplest form either because there's still a number that I can divide both 9 and 12 by and that is 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this is its simplest form because there isn't a number that will divide both by three and four evenly. Now, if some of you are wondering, well, how, how could I have just done this once? Well, that would have required you knowing that both 18 and 24 are what we call multiples of six. So this is where a uh, multiplication chart would come in really handy. Because if you look, if you were to look just at a single, the single row of a multiplication of six, of sixes, okay, so you'd have one, two, three, four. So in the chart, so and this is how we read a multiplication chart. One times six is six. Two times six is 12. Three times six is 18. And four times six is 24. You notice how both 18 and 24 are in that row, that row, one row of six. So that means there is a number times 6 that gives us 18 and 24, which means both 18 and 24 are also divisible. You can divide both of those numbers by 6. And if you notice, the 2 and the 3 do multiply to 6. So if you wanted to divide only one time, you would need, you can use that multiplication chart to divide both top and bottom by 6 to get that 3 fourths because 18 times 3 is 6 and 4 times 20, 4 times 6 is 24. Last time we talked about how we add and subtract fractions. Now, when, as just as a quick reminder, if I had Oops, sorry, 